Hey, what's going on everybody? So today I'm going to show you the performance of an Edge Router X. I'm calling it the Edge Router X speed test. And this is because I've seen questions everywhere with people asking whether or not an Edge Router can support gigabit ethernet, basically. And depending on how much you Google, you might have found a bunch of different articles or forum posts made by different people who say things anywhere between oh, it can definitely support gigabit, or you can only see 200 meg out of it, 300 meg out of it, or these processors are too bad, it can't possibly support that speed, or oh, yes it can, it can do line rate. So we're going to run some tests today and kind of put those to rest. And I think the reason that we see a lot of these different conflicting information on what the edge router can do is because it's been around for a while, and there's been a few different firmware revisions, and somewhere along the way they introduced what's called hardware offloading into the firmware, which allowed the edge router to offload these processes into hardware, which uh, significantly increased the speed which it could do it at. So depending on what year these posts are that you read about speeds, it could be a little bit off because of that. So today I'm gonna to be testing the edge router in four different configurations. And the configurations I'm going to be testing is out of the box or the default configuration. Now what this is is basically you just took the edge router out of the box, you plugged it in, and you ran the default setup wizard. That is it. The only thing on that router is the default firewall, NAT, and a DHCP pool. That's all you're running. That's going to be our first test. And our second test is going to be with offloading enabled, which should be our fastest configuration. Our third test is going to be running it with offloading enabled as well as DPI or traffic analysis. This is that feature where you can kind of see who's using the network, how much traffic they're pulling, what their overall uh, data is that they've used and kind of their speed. And you can also see like where they're browsing to, what services they're using, yada yada. But it uses DPI and it's supposed to be a little more process heavy when you do something like that. Now the last configuration is going to be what a lot of people probably buy the edge router for and that's QoS or the smart queue. This is where the edge router should actually struggle and we should see it not being able to push very much traffic at all with the QoS enabled. Now before we actually get into the testing, we need to kind of establish what tests we're going to run. So for all these tests, I'm going to be using iPerf3, and I'm going to be running five tests against each configuration. Now those five tests are going to be download, upload, UDP, and then 50 and 100 concurrent streams. And what those are just kind of to simulate a router under eh, moderate load, or a full household load. So 50 individual TCP sessions going at the same time and then up to 100 and run that. Now all of this testing is going to be done with this kind of setup. We're gonna have a server and a client both connected to the edge router running iPerf. So they're just, it's literally just a client connected into ethernet one on the edge router and the server connected on ethernet zero acting as the WAN. And the router is of course in the default configuration with the NAT enabled so it's doing NAT between the server and the client, also going through the firewall between server and client. So it's set up just like a normal home connection would be, but we're just testing the raw throughput of the edge router, so we're not putting it through any other equipment at all. And the baseline that we're going to compare this to was literally just a connection back to back between the server and client PCs. So this is what we're going to measure all of our results against. And here's a graph of my baseline numbers I got from just testing the PCs back to back. So you can see we got 942 megabits per second on the upload, 941 on the download, 942 for UDP with uh, 0 0.016 milliseconds of jitter. And for the 50 and 100 concurrent streams, you've got 936, 935 megabits per second. So that is just back to back, one wire between the PCs. Now I also did a baseline configuration where I went through my switch, or ch which is basically how I have my home network set up. So each of these PCs were connected to a Cisco 3750E, and I got roughly the same numbers. So if you compare both of the baselines, they are not far enough apart at all to warrant using one or the other. So we're using the two PCs back to back as our baseline for these tests. So let's get into testing now. So first up, we've got our default configuration. This is you just taking the router out of the box, putting it in your network rack or on your shelf or your table, next to your PC, whatever, and just running the setup wizard and going. Now this is where you're probably gonna be the most disappointed if you got gigabit ethernet as your internet connection and you just bought an edge router and slapped it in there. So here's the graph for performance straight out of the box. 
So you can see that against our baseline, the edge router got 343 megabits upload and 252 down. That is really far off of our baseline of 942 and 941. Now UDP, you can see, actually got the exact same as our baseline. And this is going to be a trend almost across the board with all these tests. I don't know if I was doing something wrong or I don't understand iPerf. I'm not really sure. If anyone knows why UDP seems to be just not affected by these different configurations in any way, shape, or form, please let me know. You'll see as we go through the rest of these graphs that UDP seems to be trucking along at full gigabit when everything else is struggling to keep up. Now you can also see we got some more UDP jitter down there, 0.2 milliseconds as opposed to our 0.016, and our 50 and 100 concurrent streams was somewhere around the 400, 400 to 450 uh, megabit mark. So not at all what we would expect to see. Well, I shouldn't say expect. It's not at all what we, would, what we would want to see if we were wanting this thing to do gigabit. Now, the reason for these numbers is that out of the box, an edge router does not have hardware offloading enabled. So this is purely, it is processing all of this traffic in the CPU, which if you look at the specs for this router, the CPU is kind of dingy. It's not, it's not the best. So let's go ahead and enable hardware offloading and see what that does to our numbers. So here we go. With hardware offloading, you can see we are right there with the baseline. I mean, a few megabits off, but as far as a router that costs $50, this is very close to what we want to see. So 921 against 942 that on the download, which is what you're going to be using at home. Come on, let's be realistic. If you're just a regular home user, download is going to be basically all you care about because your ISP probably isn't even going to give you anywhere near a gigabit upload anyway. I mean, unless you're paying for that symmetrical gigabit, which I guess if you're going that high, you might as well, but you can see that the download, it doesn't really matter against our baseline. And UDP, here we go again, basically tied with the baseline. And the jitter, yeah, it's about the same as the default config, 0.2 versus 0 0.016. 0 0.2, not bad at all. And then you can see our concurrent connections took a pretty big hit against the single stream, but still pretty good, 909, 904. I wouldn't be complaining about that for 50 bucks at all. So if we take that same configuration and we just go into the GUI and we enable hardware offloading, we can see that it kind of messes with our numbers a little bit, but not too much at all. Really the only big difference here is the difference between uh, the UDP and the concurrent streams. I mean, our upload and our download dropped a bit, but UDP, I'm not really sure why it was affected that much by this single test. This is the only test where a UDP dropped below 900 meg. Don't know why, like I said, leave a comment if you understand that. Um, our UDP jitter though went up by quite a bit. We got 1.6 milliseconds of jitter, that's not very good. And our concurrent streams have a disclaimer to make. The 100 concurrent streams number um, is actually a little fudged because I accidentally ran a 30 second test on that one when I got this 911 number. So that 911 megabits is actually a little higher than it should be because this had an extra 20 seconds to run that test and have a higher average. And so now we get into our last test, which was which is enabling QoS Smart Q. This is one of the reasons I think a lot of people might buy this router is because they think their internet performance is garbage with a lot of people connected or they want to find some way to still be able to play games while everyone else downloads torrents in their house. But if you look at these numbers right here, if you have anything that resembles a very high speed connection, you're not going to want to enable QoS. So with this test, we, I was only able to push 190 megs upload, getting 210 download. And here we go again with UDP not being affected whatsoever. Again, don't know why. And with the 50 and 100 concurrent streams, we get around the 300 megabit mark. So if you're going to be using QoS, I wouldn't try to use it on anything above, especially a 300 meg connection. And so here we get into all of our tests slammed together in the same slide. I've put them from slowest to fastest. So all the way on the right, the orange bar, that's our baseline. And we got QoS coming in at the slowest speed with about 190 upload, 210 download. Uh, the default configuration straight out of the box without hardware offloading enabled, that's only going to get you 343 up, 252 down. And traffic analysis turned on, that's going to be your third slowest. Uh, once again, it messes with UDP for whatever reason, but the rest seem to be right around on par of the uh, offload speeds. But obviously, hardware offloading, no special features enabled, that's the way to go with the edge router. And hopefully these 
numbers show you that it's capable of keeping up with a gigabit connection. Technically, there's another 20 to 30 meg in there somewhere that you could find, but I haven't really benchmarked any other router, so I don't know how close that is. If I had this router for 50 bucks, I wouldn't complain about that performance on gigabit at all. And then this slide here is just the UDP jitter put together, so traffic analysis was really slow comparatively for whatever reason. It looks like our baseline was super fast, but hardware offloading actually wasn't the fastest. Default config was the uh, had the least amount of jitter, but it's negligible difference compared to offloading. So. so there you go. I tried to get through that as fast as I possibly could. So if you had any question on what kind of speeds an Edge Router X is capable of, hopefully that cleared up some of your questions. And especially if you had them had some questions wondering like what kind of configuration or what kind of services you can run on it and still be able to keep up with high speeds. Hopefully this showed you that uh, if you want to, want to run really any service worth a damn, basically QoS, then you're, you're going to be struggling. And I'd probably look for another router that is a lot more powerful. But for $50, phew, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what you're going to do that's really a lot better than that for 50 bucks. So thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you learned something from it. Um, be sure to check out my next video where I kind of go over what QoS does to concurrent streams. I actually am testing the edge router on a 100 meg connection, which it can actually support with QoS enabled. And I'm trying to see um, what the deviation per stream is with QoS enabled versus disabled. So hopefully that one will come out in the next week or so. Um, if you liked it, like it. Uh, leave down in the comments if you got any ideas for more videos or if there was something wrong with this one. And for sure, if you know what's going on with the UDP in these tests, please let me know because it's kind of blowing my mind. I don't understand why QoS just ignores UDP traffic because that to me makes absolutely zero sense. But that's what I got in the tests. So thanks for watching.